in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. People turning south from the freeway were startled when they saw three flying saucers high over Hollywood Boulevard. There comes a time in each man's life when he can't even believe his own eyes. We had to pull in here to Space Station 7 for regeneration. We're returning to the planet Earth immediately thereafter. What progress has been made? We contacted government officials. They refuse our existence. What plan will you follow now? Plan 9. Ah, yes. Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. Long distance electrodes shot into the pineal pituitary glands of recent dead. He's close enough. Turn off your electrode gun. No! No! Stop him, Tanner! I can't get it. It's jammed. Grab him, you fool! Drop the gun to the floor, Tanner. The metal will break contact. now then with their meddling permit them to destroy the entire universe you're always right arrows of course but those are not my words those are the words of the rumor first was your firecracker a harmless explosive then your hand grenade they began to kill your own people a few at a time then the bomb then a larger bomb many people are killed at one time then your scientists stumbled upon the atom bomb. Split the atom. Then the hydrogen bomb, where you actually explode the air itself. 
Now you can see. Brings the total destruction of the entire universe served by our sun. The only explosion left is the solar night. We'll see of them, perhaps. But sooner or later, there'll be others. friends, or perhaps it is morning or afternoon. It could be any of these because all three events are also future events. And that is what we're interested in, isn't it? The future. After all, the future is where you and I are going to be living in the future. And remember, my friends, future events will affect you in the future as future events. These future events may have even just happened or are happening at this very moment. And technically, you could say these future events are no longer future events because they have happened. But in fact, future events that have already happened could still be considered future events because you haven't been affected by these future events as of yet. And also because they really are in the future, your future. Yet they are affecting your future already, because future events always affect the future, even if the future events are no longer in the future, or are still in the future. Perhaps aliens from other worlds are watching us at this moment, this exact moment that was at one time the future, and still is the future, and is the future again while still being the future. Will the populations of these other worlds be friendly? Or will they come to Earth one day in the future bent on destroying us? Or possibly that future has already arrived as a future event. Some of us laugh at aliens from outer space and even at the film Independence Day. But God help us in the future, the future that is affecting the future. It is in a small, quiet town that our story begins. At sundown, four high school students gathered at Lover's Lane, just outside of Pinsnez, Oregon. Minutes later, a young man named Buddy arrived on the scene. Stop trying to steal second! Sorry, babe.
Come on, this high school. <laughs> Not cool, buddy. What, what isn't cool? And how did you know my name? We're advanced placement students, so we know everything. <laughs> and you, being here with that at date, isn't cool. Hey, Brian, Meg, come check this guy out. You came to Lover's Lane by yourself? Yeah, what's up with that? Are you a pervert, buddy? No, <laughs> not even. My, my parents just moved here and I thought this was a good place to meet some kids before school starts. Hey, Brian, buddy came to Lover's Lane to meet some kids. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you a little old for high school? I, I'm a senior, okay? I, I was held back a few years. Joe, if you count kindergarten, I'd never share it. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the hand, buddy? Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, that's been bothering me too. <laughs> what do you think, Steve? <laughs> Let's see it, buddy. See? No. The other one. <laughs> oh, that one. It's kind of shy. <laughs> it's him, Jay! It's all true! No, 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 it's not what you think. Jeez, Louise, this always happens at these places. <laughs> were startled when they saw a flying saucer high over Lover's Lane. There comes a time in each person's life when he or she can't believe his or her own eyes. A flying saucer seen over Vince and his own. Look! Look at the skies! What does that sky? Seem okay, Doki. Besides, you never know when you're gonna need a guy with a hook for a hand. You know what I mean? Huh? Okay, Doki. <laughs> Mysterious stranger. They killed Molly. We heard the whining and, and the whimpering and then the yelp. Molly was your dog? No. Molly was the woman I picked up from the Pink Flamingo Lounge earlier this evening. Wait a minute. Well, we were at the Pink Flamingo Lounge earlier and I don't remember seeing you there. Well, I spent most of my time, um, <laughs> crouched behind the bar. What happened? Well, Molly was wearing this short skirt and no panties, you see. Uh, no, oh. I mean here. Uh, wh what happened to Molly here? Uh, most likely it was uh, aliens on a recon mission to our planet in preparation for the ensuing invasion. Molly must have come across them before they were able to assume human guises to blend in. They disintegrated her with long distance electro rays. The only thing left is this collar. She loved this collar. Especially when I would put one end around her neck and fasten the other one to my Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Where there, mysterious stranger. We're teenagers in high school. 
ignorant of the sexual proclivities of promiscuous adults who have been around the world so many times they have to constantly devise new and outrageous methods to their lovemaking in order to just achieve satisfaction. <laughs> That's right. See, we're just as happy as clowns to get to second base, to get to first base. <laughs> and we don't want to have any dog hollow used during coitus. <laughs> At least not until college. <laughs> oh, I do. I do. I do. Then hear about it on your own time, buddy. You leave us out of it. He's in high school. He was told back a year. Two of you count kindergarten? Mm. In fact, you all look a little old for high school. <laughs> what? We're mature for our age. Yeah. Is that the flying saucer? <laughs> I think the world's in big trouble. Look at the writing on the side of the saucer. Omni vincere? That's Latin for to conquer everything. How do you suppose the aliens know the Latin? But simple. This isn't their first recon mission to this planet. No, when they came before, it must have been some time to the height of the Roman Empire. They learned Latin then, probably in a couple days through their super-developed alien brains. Then they went back to their home planet and taught the entire species Latin in preparation for the ensuing invasion. Yeah, that makes sense. When they left here, probably sometime between 49 BC and 180 AD, they were certain that, that Rome would be the dominant world power for centuries. And due to the twin paradox of Einstein's special theory of relativity, they may have only left a few years ago their time, depending on how fast their flying saucers can travel. And not knowing anything about their physiology, it's possible that some of the same aliens that were here before are here again. If that's true, then we can definitely find out for sure if there was an actual historical Jesus Christ. No. Ooh, 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 ooh. Or how Cicero actually died. Oh, what what yes. really happened in the last night? The Legion of Rome based in Britain. Ooh. Yeah. Hit the brakes, kids. These aliens aren't here to exchange fascinating anecdotes at cocktail parties or, or to shame the Texas Department of Education into writing Students with textbooks containing actual facts. <laughs> These aliens are here to wipe us out because their planet is dying and they need a new place to live. Or to enslave us and exploit our natural resources or uh, raise us as a food source because they like the taste of human flesh. Or to rape our women. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because years of radiation technology has rendered their females barren and they need to ensure the propagation of species. Well, it's clear they didn't come here in peace after what they did to Molly. Molly. <clears throat> we need to alert the authorities. So much for alerting the authorities. Yeah, they'll never believe us now. What are we gonna do? I don't wanna be raped by animals! Well, well, I say we just skip the whole process of trying to convince adults that we're telling the truth, since that never works anyway. We need to take matters into our own hands. Or in my case, yes. hand. Was that supposed to be a joke, buddy? I, I just thought this was a good spot for a little levity to really pay attention. Uh, We're on the eve of an alien invasion. You're cracked and wise. <laughs> I bet you don't make friends easily, do you, buddy? No, I, no, I'm sorry. So what's the plan? Well, our one advantage is that they will probably take the aliens a couple days to learn English. I mean, Latin's a dead language. But don't they still speak it in Latin America? Meg, this uh, guy is as dumb as a bag of hooks. <laughs> so what you kids need to do 
tomorrow I scour the entire town, noting anyone with difficulty speaking English. Double note them if they lapse into Latin. Meet up and compare notes from there. Well, what do you got to do? I think we'd be best served if I spent the next couple of days at the Pink Flamingo Lounge. <laughs> Uh, nothing like a bar to catch wind of all the goings on in town. You have a plan? I do. Well, what is it? I prefer to keep it uh, mysterious for the time being. Aww. Hey, now wait just a gosh darn second here. How, how do we know the mysterious stranger isn't really an alien? I mean, he seems to know an awful lot about him, and he is a stranger and mysterious. An hour ago, you were a stranger. And you have a hook for a hand. Well, well, that's for true. He speaks English pretty fluently, and I haven't heard him accidentally say anything in Latin, so... I trust him. We should get back to town. Well, can I catch a ride with you guys? I might as well get started in my part in preserving humanity as we know it. You can ride with Buddy Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, need some money, too. I'm a little broke right now, and, uh, it would look, uh, look suspicious if I wasn't drinking. Bars don't give out beers pro bono, you know? <laughs> See what I did there? I meant to use that Latinism. I meant to use the Latinism, actually. Pro bono, from the Latin, pro bono physico, is labor donated without recompense. It has nothing to do with getting free beer. Oh, I stand corrected. So anyway, uh, about some bread. Yeah, I'll put you on our, our, our tab. Just come on, let's jam. Yeah, let's jam. Residents near the Pinsnez Cemetery paid little attention to the shaking ground, flashing lights, and alien sounds that accompanied the disintegration of the flying saucer, which simultaneously shot long-distance electrodes into the pineal and pituitary glands of the recent dead. conversation is conducted in Latin. The playwright doesn't know Latin, so he wrote the dialogue in English. It's really Latin. We were able to move all of our equipment and supplies into the cave before the crash. Ah, oh, Edgar, have you finished setting up the game of Latin Communicator? Yes, I'm very like it. Why? <laughs> Why are we here? We're gonna implement Plan 9 again? Of course not! Plan 9 failed miserably the last time. I have learned from Tana that one of the Earthlings even produced a documentary motion picture based on the secret testimonies of those who survived. Luckily for us, that motion picture was regarded by most Earthlings as the fanatical and wholly unbelievable rantings of a lunatic. Still, we don't want to take any chances. You are Tanner? Yes. I am the lone survivor of the Plan 9 mission. I was able to escape our flying saucer before it crashed, and I've been living on this planet as one of the Earthlings for over 50 years. Recently, my telesetic powers made me aware of your intimate arrival, and I came to this town to meet you. How many are you, Kanamit? Edgar and myself. 
We had to dematerialize the saucer according to regulations 1004K full stop 013 due to the immediate arrival of the Earthlings. Do you think there are other survivors? We know that Croc and Kroll were crushed in the crash, <laughs> but whether Creek and Crank also croaked is questionable. <laughs> they may have flown from the saucer. Great Caesar's ghosts! I know it was only Croc and Kroll, but I liked them. At any rate, we must find Creek and Crank if they did survive the crash. And here I thought Croc and Kroll would never die. <laughs> the telescopic powers also made me aware that two of Earth's undead were accidentally resurrected when long-distance electrodes shot from your disintegrating ship in the pineal and pituitary glands. We must find these walking corpses. Did you bring your electrode guns? Yes. Excellent. We'll take care of that problem when we get to the cave. But first, we must work on your English lessons. I've brought current Earthling technology to help. You must keep these in your hands at all times. <laughs> if you do not, the earthlings will become suspicious. <laughs> Why isn't everyone speaking Latin? What happened to the great Roman Empire? It's a long story. When you become fluent in English, I'll lend you Gibbons the history and decline of the Roman Empire. You should be able to read it in the evening. As for Edgar, you may need a little more time. Now, let us begin. Look at your screens and repeat after me. Jane said, run, run. Run, Dick, run. Run and see. Run, 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 Dick, run. Run and see. What's a dick?
wife keeps telling me, we've been married 20 or 30 years, I can never remember exactly. And she calls me a pig because I expect her to have dinner ready when I come home. She just doesn't get it. I mean, that's her job for crying out loud. It's Clarence P. Applebottom's job to bring home the bacon, and it's Candy Applebottom, Candy Applebottom's job to cook it. If I'm a pig, well, that's what pigs do. We bring home the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. That's because you've probably never been married or had a job and don't understand the division of labor. No, I mean, I don't get the joke. Really? You don't see that all five would... Oh, never mind. I get it. My wife doesn't get it, but I get it. Bet your ass I get it. Clarence P. Applebottom always gets it. Women. Yeah, women. Can't live with them and can't shoot them. Well, well actually, you can't have them in Florida. Just plead the stand your ground law. Here's <laughs> Molly. Oh, she disappeared. Disappeared? Doesn't sound like Molly. Not when she's doing the horizontal bop, anyway. I mean, once that woman gets started, she likes to go for hours, days even. And I assume when you two left here that... Well, what they say about people who assume, Lou. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> so you're the mysterious stranger. I bet you've got some stories you could tell. <laughs> I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> Tat ships on fire off the shoulder of a ride. <laughs> I've watched sea beams glitter in the darkness at a hazard gate. And all these moments we lost in time. Like tears in the rain. <laughs> Flashback. You know, that's all life really is when you get down to it, is one big flashback. I mean, you yeah. can never really capture the present because as soon as you try to seize the moment, it's already in the past. And future events will. They're still always in the future. That's profound. You know, I love it when mysterious strangers come in here, drink heavily, and espouse meaningful tautological statements. Let me buy you a beer. Hold on a minute. Did you question the mysterious stranger's statement using the principles of contradiction, excluded middle, and identity before offering him that beer pro bono? Of course. I don't give away beers frivolously. What did you just say? In logic, a preposition that is true is... No, 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 no. Uh, you, you used a Latinism. Misused it, actually, pro bono. Misused it? I don't think so. I'm the Pinsnaz High School principal. Go Pandas! Go Pandas! And Clarence P. Applebottom doesn't misuse Latinisms. Well, you did misuse it, but that is not the point. What is the point? The point is... I don't know. I forgot. Too many beers. Yeah, and you got the last one pro bono! That was the point. I come in here every night, and I never get a beer pro bono. And my wife, we've been married 20 or 30 years, I can never remember exactly. She's never worked. Her whole life has been one pro bono after another. But do you think Clarence P. Applebottom ever gets anything pro bono? Hell no. Whew. Hey, Lou. Hey, Johnny. Martini. You got it, Chug. Say. Oh, 
You look mysterious. Stranger. Mm hmm. So what's your deal anyway, Johnny? What's with that? Oh, this, I well, I love women so much that I dare to dress like one. I get it. Say, who's the bad? Are they good? They're called Kobayashi Maru. Oh, they don't look Japanese. No! The name denotes a no-win scenario, that test character. Haven't you ever seen Star Trek or Death of Khan? No, I hate Japanese movies. They always have that creepy woman crawling around. It gives me nightmares. <laughs> How do you know, Beer? Hey, yeah, that was me. Constant groping of things unknown. Drawing from the endless wow, reaches hey, of time. Hey, brings to light many startling things. Startling because they seem new. Sudden. But most are not new to the signs of the ages. Pull the stream! Pull the stream! Beware. Beware. Beware the big green dragon. It sits on your doorstep. And these little boys, puppy dogs' tails and big bats' tails. Beware, take care. Beware. Screaming relaxes me. <laughs> what I need is a vampire cocktail to settle my nerves. Not just settle them, but petrify them. Should I use cherries or an olive? Neither, as they would only disintegrate in the cocktail. However, if one does want a garnish, I prefer an eyeball. There must be one around here somewhere. What the hell's going on? What are these horrible creatures? Looks like two recent corpses reanimated when the automated destruction of a flying saucer shot long distance electrodes into the pineal pituitary glands. Oh. And a gorilla. Stand back. I'll take care of them. <laughs> Searching for uh, aliens. We have been. 
band. This town is the typical Americana where the sidewalks fold up at night. What's wrong with the band? They were killed. Oh. Oh, we also believe it's time that we created a retronym in order to more specifically designate the aliens who are evil and want to destroy our way of life from the other aliens who are, you know, working for low wages and no benefits in order to preserve our way of life. What's a retronym? Well, that's a type of neologism used to provide a new name to differentiate the original from a newer form of version. Uh, acoustic guitar is a good example. Before the electric guitars, the guitar was just a guitar. In our case, we want to make sure that the aliens we are searching for are extraterrestrials and not aliens from a foreign country. We do not want the extraterrestrial aliens that we are searching for, most likely with the aim of either destroying completely or expunging permanently from our soil to in any way, shape, or form serve as a metaphor for terrestrial aliens. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a symbol instead of a metaphor? I'll get back to you on that, okay. Brian. Okay. Steve. <laughs> Why not just call them? Extraterrestrials. Well, that would be too many symbols for syllables for most people. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just call them not of this earth? I saw a movie about alien vampires once called that once. Not of this earth does only contain monosyllabic words, but not of this earth alien might have uh, still too many words to serve our purpose. But. What if we were to make Not Of This Earth an acronym, N-O-T-E, note? The word would also describe what we're doing. Note, team, anyone we suspect of being an alien. Only, of course, Not Of This Earth aliens, mind you. Of course. We are looking for people who Latinize words in order to find extraterrestrials. If we Latinize note and pronounce it note, and combine it with alien, it creates a natural diphthong, therefore, no tailings. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. So That's pretty good. The problem with that is that in its written form, it could be pronounced using the short vowel ah sound, not aliens, instead of no tailings. Right. While intending to pronounce the intended long vowel a sound, the reader might pronounce it with the short vowel o sound, giving us no tailings. <laughs> which, uh, as we all know, could be looked at as a disparaging remark towards Italians, <laughs> which would just bring us back full circle from the entire problem we're trying to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> How about we just call them ETs? I saw a movie about an alien trapped on Earth once, called that once. That's not a bad idea, buddy, but most people might just confuse the bloodthirsty, bent on total annihilation aliens with the warm and fuzzy ones in the film. Okay, how about we just use Notalian, but we never write the word down except in our uh, super secret Notalian notation notebooks, huh? Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. No, it's not. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we should get back to town. Yeah. Steve and I gotta get up early in the morning bop that in practice. Go Pat! Go Pandas! Meg? Uh, buddy? And Jane and I will scour the entire town afterwards. Uh, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to remain here, have a couple more beers, a couple shots of whiskey, and uh, fuck Lou. Maybe Johnny, if he comes back, or uh, even both. We really don't want to hear about that. Now, who's Johnny? Uh, I do. You can hear about it on your own time, buddy, and you leave us out of here. You stay here, and I don't want to hear any gross stories, you weirdo! <laughs> Well, I guess that uh, just leaves me and you, Lou. I'm not counting Buddy because I uh, once swore an oath to one of my dying wives that I'd never again have some sex with somebody with a hook or a hand. <laughs> um. <laughs> you and me. What? Not not me and you. When using a pronoun in a compound subject, all other pronouns come before I, me, me, etc. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh.
The only one for me is you and you for me. So happy together. cave they work through the night using their super advanced notalian technology to hack every computer program in the world and also control the undead. The following conversation is conducted in Latin. The playwright still doesn't know Latin, so he wrote the dialogue in English. But it's really Latin. Most of it anyway. <laughs> Excellent. I've ordered overnight delivery so we can begin phase one of Plan 10 tomorrow. What is Plan 10? Plan 10 is wiping out the earthlings using licorice. Mm, not that licorice. <laughs> yes. Ever since our first recon mission to Rome returned to our planet with licorice, our people have been enamored with the delectable delight. However, our planet does not have the well-drained soils in low lands with full sun to grow large amounts of the crop. That is why when we ran out of the earth licorice, we began to synthesize the earth delicacy. But it never tasted as good as the original. Edgar, keep your long-distance electro gun pointed up. We must lure in the undead that were accidentally resurrected. True. We were never entirely successful in replicating the nuances of licorice that give the candy its esoteric flavor. <laughs> but we managed to perfectly synthesize one of licorice's chief active ingredient, glycerism. <laughs> <laughs> and why are we... What does licorice have to do with destroying humans? Glycerism lowers potassium levels in the airplanes, and this can lead to many medical conditions that cause death if too much is consumed. But receive our shipment from Amazon tomorrow. We'll begin building our super advanced mechanism that will synthesize vast quantities of glycerin. And then, in our human guises, we will use our long distance electro guns to inject it at more than toxic levels into the food and water used by the denizens of this town. If Plan 10 is successful in Pinsnez, we will notify our ruler. And then our planet's fleet of flying saucers will cover all of all the Earth using their long distance electro missiles to inject glycerin into consumer products until the entire human race is annihilated. <laughs> Why are we killing off the humans? Because the Earthlings are on the brink of obliterating the entire universe. They're obsessed with creating weapons of mass destruction, and soon they'll discover Salernite, a method used to create a bomb by exploding the sun. We've tried to reason with them before to no avail. They're only concerned with money and power. Our only alternative, their complete eradication. Ah, the revenants have arrived. What is this place? Where is my attic? She speaks. This is something new. The endeavor incapable of speech when we implemented Plan 9. We have come a long way in long distance electrodes since you've been on this planet. To die 
really be dead? Oh, that must be glorious. And then stop it. Use, use your electro gun. Turn it off now, but he's getting too close. Stop him. Look, I no. told you. No, no. Stop him, you fool. My gun, it's jammed. I can't turn it off. You will come under my spell. You will be my slave. Oh, no. Maybe if we could have quest dreams. But that's what I've been done before. It could have been dangerous. We don't know what will happen. <laughs> that was too close. Edgar, throw your gun to the floor. Maybe the contact will clear the jam. <laughs> it's in working order. Whatever caused it, the jam must have been cleared by the fall. What should we do with them? I was originally going to disintegrate the bodies using the reverse polarity setting on our guns, but perhaps we should hold off on that. We may find a use for them yet. Edgar, set your gun to maximum hypothalamus stasis and that'll keep them immobile for the night. Where is my poison bar? I need a vampire cocktail. Hmm. It doesn't stop them from talking. Never mind. There's nothing more we can do tonight. Let us get back to our English lessons. Candidate, please begin. These buttons are so small. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, never mind how long precisely, with little or no money in my purse and no particular interest to me on shore, I decided to sail about a little to see the watery part of the world. Excellent, Kanemit. Now your turn, Edgar. <laughs> Good nugget room. <laughs> Good night, moon. <laughs> Good night, cow. Jumping over the moon? Oh, I don't believe this. You tell me they got some animal here that can jump over the moon? Oh, Edgar, you are the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> A time to live, a time to die. Yes, we all live our lives with the knowledge that one day we will buy the farm. Yet death can still be a shock to those left behind, especially when those we love, who are still relatively endowed with the blossom of youth, kick the bucket, suddenly and without warning. Certainly more of a shock than when the grim reaper arrives suddenly with warning such as at the end of a long terminal illness, or gradually without warning, as often happens to alcoholics and heroin addicts, or gradually with warning, such as dying of old age, which really doesn't count as a shock at all. When the dark companion bids someone you know to put on the pine overcoat and sleep the big sleep, the shadows of grief can overwhelm your very soul. Why, why, why you cry out to the heavens, helpless, hapless, and heartbroken? But Thanatos doesn't answer. For it is only in our own death that we will receive the answers to the questions we ask about death when we're alive. Unless, of course, when we bite the big one, we simply quit existing.
which means we aren't going to be around after we die to get those answers to the questions we asked in life about death. And that seems pretty damned unfair, if you ask me. A small town, so virtuous, so pure, so innocent. Yet even a small town, with all its soda fountain shops, diners, locally owned businesses, secret esoteric men's fraternities, churches, winning high school football teams, hayrides, and a movie theater that only shows G and PG rated films is not safe from the clutches of Thanatos. Mm. Mm. I love black licorice way better than red licorice. Mm. Actually, black licorice is a retronym. I know what a retronym is. Wait, uh, I forgot. Uh, what is it? So, originally, all licorice was black and simply called licorice. With the advent of red and other colors of licorice, however, people began calling it black licorice to differentiate it from the other flavors. Acoustic guitar is another example of a retronym. Before electric guitars, guitars were just guitars. Oh yeah, <laughs> guitars! Yeah! One must keep in mind that in North America, most licorice actually contains no or very little actual licorice. Aniseed oil is substituted for flavoring. This is actually a good thing because true licorice contains a compound glycerin, which can lower potassium levels and lead to edema, high blood pressure, lethargy, arrhythmia, or congestive heart failure especially in adults over 40 who consume more than two ounces a day. Well, I still really love black licorice anyway. Yeah, okie dokie. <laughs> Time to meet up with Steve and Ryan. We have hopefully all the supplies that we should need for what will be a very rewarding day of searching for extraterrestrials. Actually, they're called notalians now. Oh, that's a good idea. By using a retronym, we can avoid using terminology that could possibly be interpreted as having a political undertone. Wouldn't searching connote that we were able to identify what we were looking for? Point well taken, Meg. But haven't we already identified the aliens a priori? Hey, isn't that word you just used a Latin ism? A priori is the Latin ism, but it's commonly used in writings and discourse to determine uh, when uh, knowledge is based on reasoning versus a posteriori, which is knowledge based on experience. And wouldn't you say a posteriori was also used in the identification process? Um, <laughs> well, you know. Applied philosophy is, like, seldom categorical. This is the point. <laughs> well taken, Jane! <laughs> Are you guys sure you're not no aliens? You're using an awful lot of Latinism. Shut <laughs> up! <laughs> Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Do you have talk? In English, Edgar. What mean it? What does it mean? You must use your verbs, Edgar, and make certain they agree with your subject in person and number. English? Hard. English is hard. Edgar, indeed, the lights are on and no one's home. <laughs> I believe it best. If you don't speak in front of the earthlings, Tanner, 
Have you received any information from Namus on the possible whereabouts of Creek and Crank if they still live? I will check. Creek and Crank live? Come here? We hope so, Edgar. No word on Creek and Crank. Mm -hmm. But the supplies I ordered have been delivered to the entrance of the cave. We can begin construction on our super advanced glycerin and synthesizer fabricator. Excellent. Edgar, start bringing in the supplies into the cave. Yes, Imperial Legate. There's something else that concerns me. I've been monitoring the Earth teenagers who arrived at your saucer crash last night, and they seem to be looking for us. That is a problem. It is imperative for Plan 10 to be successful that we remain unknown to the Earthlings. Hmm. Perhaps our zombies can help. Short back and forth, and toxic waste, rotty tickets everywhere. If spotted in time, a duck. Mysterious stranger. Brian and I noted, double noted, everyone at morning football practice. Go pandas! Go, Go pandas! pandas! The pandas. During football practice, coach used a total of five Latin isms. Let's see. They were Tabula Rosa, Persona non grata, Air Go Go Go. Status quo and verbatim. That is suspicious. Especially in light of the fact that he doesn't use words at all. He only grunts, groans, grumbles, and growls. Brian and I are going to the soda fountain to check it out. Uh, can Ready? we go to Woolworths? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you owe me. I want to go to Woolworths. And how did your search for the Notalians go today? Well, the only thing that we noted in our Super secret, no notation, no bucks. 
were two dogs. Dogs? Their barking did have a certain Latinistic quality. Yeah. That also is suspicious. Where's Molly? Uh, she should be here getting the bar ready to open. Oh, I hope she doesn't call it sick. I don't want to work another double. Ah, uh, Lou. Molly's dead. What? She was disintegrated. Damn. That was Molly. Always running off, sniffing out trouble. I guess I better start getting things ready. Ooh, I don't want to sound callous while you're grieving, Lou, but I should probably get ready for opening, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I hope you kids know what you're doing, Constantine. You sound like someone who knows what you're talking about, Boo. I only ever talk about what I know what I'm talking about. There's no sense in talking about what you're talking about otherwise. <laughs> what do you know about hunting Notalians? I've been hunting Notalians since my first abduction when I was a teenager. Holy cow! You were abducted multiple times. Do you remember what happened? Oh, I'm no fool. I've been hypnotized. Do you feel like sharing? No. <gasps> but I will anyway. Oh, good. As you probably know, after abduction, capture, the abductee is subjected to a physical examination. This procedure, of course, is focused on the genitalia and the anus. It, uh, it, it would give you nightmares of inordinate disturbance if I told you the things that were inserted into my- We really don't want to hear about any of this, Lou! I'd like to hear about it. <laughs> Ew! Ew! Well then, stay here and hear about it on your own time, buddy! Gross! Right now, Meg and I have to sign in for volunteers work at our summer school. We're tutoring special students right now. <laughs> right, right now. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah! The football coach was just found dead! Oh. Jumping Jehoshaphat! What happened? Was he killed by well, I was present at the autopsy, never mind why. And the medical examiner's report stated that the death was due to an overdose of glycerin. <gasps> he must have been real licorice from the Netherlands. Damn, the Dutch and their killer confections. And he was only in his late 40s. Oh, that's when licorice is at its most dangerous. We have to find Brian and Steve and investigate this mystery. to figure out the symbolism of the gold doubloon in Moby Dick for themselves. Oh, wouldn't the gold doubloon in Moby Dick be a metonym rather than a symbol? Mm, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> oh, look for symbol. Give a man satin undies, a makeup kit, a goofy wig, a chainsaw or gun, a roll of duct tape, a musical instrument, a pair of oversized shoes, sandpaper, some dental floss, and a reliable knife, and he's the happiest individual in the world. Because he can work and play at the same time. Fucking A, this is a fucking sweet fucking setup. Fuck, fuck yeah. yeah! Now, just who are you, potty mouths? <laughs> We're the fucking clowns that are fucking pity. That's fucking you. <laughs> And just who the fuck? A fucking. Whoa. Uh, I, I, I'm Johnny. You in fucking charge here, Johnny? Oh, I, I'm in charge. Oh, yeah? Well, what's your fucking name? Lou. Well, Lou. We're your fucking new fucking house band. So fucking get fucking used to it. Fuck oh, yeah. Okay. But you're gonna have to curtail the profanity. 
have a lot of high school students that drink here. Ooh. Hey, talk any way you like. The average adolescent uses roughly 80 to 90 swear words a day anyway. What harm can you really do? <laughs> We'll just fucking see about fucking that, Lou! Yeah, you bet we will! What the fuck did you just fucking say, Halliburton? I mean... <laughs> fucking yeah, you fucking bitch, you fucking ass we fucking will! That is fucking better. <laughs> Shakira! Fuck! Ah! Are we fucking tight? We're fucking tighter than a dick's fucking half man, Monsanto! <laughs> <laughs> right. That's fucking rock. Thank you. 
I used to play keyboards before the, well, accident. I used to also say, hey, do you guys cover Wrecking Ball? Fuck you, buddy! Jeez Louise, these guys know my name too? Uh, so what happened to your hand? Oh, you know, classic garbage disposal incident. <laughs> Just had to put your hand down there while the garbage disposal was running, huh? Yeah. See how close you could get? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. What did you kids find out? First of all, Brian and I got a cross section of licorice from all the stores in town to sell it. And then we took all the licorice to our high school science lab, Go Pandas! Go Pandas! And ran tests for glycerin. The tests all came back negative. Then, Brian and I went to the coroner's office to ask for the autopsy reports. The official report states that Coach was found dead wearing a dog collar which had glycerin disease and absorbed into his neck. He was also found naked in Clarence P. Apple Bottoms' basement, <laughs> sporting a leather leash and an idle plug mm. with the tail of an Irish wolfhound attached to it. <laughs> Ew. Ew! It's really specific. You must have somehow picked up Molly's collar, which was still coated in a res. Lizard is in residue from when the aliens disintegrated with their long distance electro guns. And that makes sense because Applebottom's house is near where we found her ashes. Hey, how do you know that? I used to go to parties at the Applebottom's house. All the high school teachers would go. Anyway, this is good news. It means the aliens have not yet proceeded with injecting our food and water supply with glycerin. And... Wait a minute. Wasn't Applebottom killed by the undead? He was. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make sense. What do you think about that mysterious stranger? Everything can be explained, but not every explanation can be known. <laughs> <laughs> No. Well, um, Meg and I also have some good news. While Steve and Brian were at the medical examiner's office, we discovered an app that, with a little tweaking on our part, enables our iPhones to shoot long-distance reverse electrode polarity beams. Ooh. I'll send it to everyone to download. It should allow us to reverse the effects of the long-distance electrodes that were shot into the undead's pineal and pituitary glands leaving them, well, merely dead. Is there nothing Apple is not capable of? So what happened at these parties at the, at the Apple Bottoms house, Mysterious Stranger? Mysterious things, buddy. Typical. The kinds of things that make a mysterious stranger the perfect guest. They would practice low protocol edge play. Their black sheep parties might include nose play, Needle torture, mummification, golden showers. Oh. I don't want to hear about any of this, mysterious stranger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do. Do it on your own time, buddy! <laughs> We've got work to do. Are you ready to unveil your plan, mysterious stranger? I am. <laughs> well? Bring it in. All right, so. Alan LeKine stated, failing to plan is planning to fail. Who is Alan LeKine, you ask? That is a very good question. Alan LeKine is credited as the creator of LeKine's question, according to Wikipedia. Your next question most likely will be, what is LeKine's question? Another very good question, indeed. That is a very good question in contrast to the questionable question. For surely, a very good question is not questionable, and therefore needs not be questioned. Whereas a questionable question should be questioned. And what is Lacan's question is a very good question, not at all questionable, thus bearing no need to be questioned, as the question itself is asking one to question. 
in the manner of a very good questioning. The question of what is Lacan's question, and the answer to that question is, what is the best use of my time right now? One should ponder Lacan's question as we proceed with our story. That is the plan. One, two, three. Go, Paris! Kids are weird. Seems like a good plan to me. Failing plan is planning to fail. Huh. Wow, that is so totally true. Yeah. Actually, I would question your use of the adverb totally in your declaration of truth concerning that epigram. Using the correspondence theory of truth, which generally can be implied with empiricism as far as truth pertains to reality, I would suggest that bad or poor planning could equally lead to failure. Failure that might not occur with no planning at all. In, in fact, it's interesting to note that the sentence structure actually infers that failing to plan is in itself a plan. A plan to fail. You know, there is nothing I like more than sitting in a bar beers and shots of whiskey or even tequila, having deep, meaningful, philosophical conversations while imagining what sex would be like with the participants in that conversation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> time is of the essence. And we need to implement our plan before the Notalians implement their plan. Yeah. Yo, right. Is that lock, lock, and load? What? What, dudes? From the movie Platoon? I, I thought this was a good spot to toss out a badass line! Hey! Tossing out badass lines? My job, not yours. B, that was nowhere near a badass line. Now, let's go introduce these undead fucks to our little friends! <laughs> let's jam! The following conversation is conducted in Latin. The playwright is lazy and still hasn't learned Latin. So once again, he wrote the dialogue in English. But it's really in Latin. Are you certain we have adopted the correct Erdling form, Crank? It's the only species we've seen so far that makes any sense, Creek. The bipeds do all of the work, and most of the other quadrupeds either produce or are food. We, on the other hand, have our food prepared by the bipeds. They wash us, massage us, dote on us, play with us, give us treats, and pick up our excrement. It only seems logical that this is the organism at the top of the food chain. I agree with everything you say. However, the one thing that keeps bothering me is the language. Apparently, they no longer speak Latin, but we have learned their new language fluently in a matter of minutes due to the fact the vocabulary consists of less than 30 words and the syntax is so very simple. How could the earthlings have progressed to this point with such limited verbal skills and no opposable thumbs? Even the bipeds here have far more complex means of communication. I have been bothered by this as well, Creek, and have come up with two possible explanations. Just a minute while I get to this. Oh. Ah. Uh, yes. Creek, that's very rude to do in public. All the other Earthlings do it. That is no excuse for us to act uncivilized. At any rate, one possibility is that the humans have merely become lazy. They achieved a point in their society that with the bipeds performing all of the work, they were content with their lives and had no more challenges. Over the years, this contentment led to the disappearance of critical thinking and they have lapsed into a lifestyle in which more complex language is no longer needed, nor even available to them. However, I think a more plausible explanation is that the Earthlings now use telepathy among each other for their intellectual discourse and use speech only for instant gratification. You believe the Earthlings are telepaths? I think it's very likely. This would explain why they no longer respond to us when we speak to them in Latin. They have moved beyond the need for language except, as I pointed out, to give the bipeds orders. This is most disconcerting. Our people have never succeeded in telepathic communication, although we do have telesthetic powers. 
True. But there is something else that is even more perturbing. I have been picking up on some of the bipeds' language. The word they use to describe us is... Dog. The word they use to describe their deity... Is God. Great Caesar's ghost! Dog is God spelled backwards! Precisely. You see why it is so imperative that we wipe out these megalomaniacs. I do indeed. They began with firecrackers, a harmless explosive. Then came the hand grenade, then the bomb, then a larger bomb. Many earthlings were killed at one time. Then their scientists stumbled upon the atom bomb, split the atom, then the hydrogen bomb, where they actually exploded the air itself. If the earthlings truly believe they are gods, then the only thing left is... Yes! Exploding the sun! They must be on the verge of discovering the secret of the Solaranite! Wiping out the earthlings! That doesn't include us now, does it? Of course not, Creek. We're good dogs. So the blind guy says, hell no. I don't have to explain it five times. You're a pig, Avalado. I don't get it. <laughs> you don't get it? How old are you anyway? If you've been around in Paris since 1775, you'd know about French Cortes and Rosalie Duke. Or in the US in the 1920s, you'd know about writer Anita Luce, or... Never mind. I get it. My wife doesn't get it, but I get it. You bet your ass I get it. Clarence the Avalon always gets it. <laughs> Where are we anyway? Out we're on the floor, I can't find my gun. <laughs> Listen to them, children of the night. What music they make.
I'm dead. Of course we're in dead. We're alive. No, <laughs> we, we were alive. Then we were dead. Now we are the undead. I don't get it. <laughs> Look at those yards. <laughs> you come under my spell. You will be my slave of love. <laughs> Go! <laughs> oh, hey, come back, you rotten gorilla! But I always get it. Clarence the Apple One always gets it. You look delicious. Stay away from him, you cadaverous meeks. Where did you come from? All part of the mysterious stranger's plan. He suspected from the way you dressed that you were a sinister sorceress who kept a freeze spell on a group. So he had me follow at a discreet distance, just in case. You're going down, sweetheart. You must feel pretty badass if you think you can destroy me with that. My little friend here has an app that enables it to shoot long-distance reverse electrode polarity beam into your pineal and pituitary glands, cutting off the electrokinetic and thus acting as a decomposer ray. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty badass, you Elvira wannabe. Oh, I promise you a slow and painful death by using that name in my presence. <laughs> oh, the final scream, the ultimate in relaxation. <coughs> oh, Lord, this for the old man. Ah, Nick, the final cry of my lover. No, 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 right, no. Okay. Oh, gross. <laughs> hey, no, 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 I'm not one of them. I'm the Princess High School principal for crying out loud. Go, Vanda! Oh, yes! <laughs> well, gets it now. For sure. Are you okay, mysterious stranger? Of course. Buddy, he's done. <laughs> All right. You gotta tuck. No, you need to cut off his hands, his feet, and his head. Spread it around. We don't want those no aliens resurrecting him to fight against us. Oh no, Brian! I brought my katana. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> the gorilla took off with Jane. We have to save her from a certain grisly death. Relax, sport. I don't think killing your Swedes with that gorilla has in mind. What are you talking about? If you wanted to kill her, why would he run off her? No, that gorilla wants to <coughs> monkey love. <laughs> Might kill her after, but first he's gonna play hide the salami. I still don't understand. Oh, uh, he's gonna take um. Are you going to make the two-back beast? Or take a one-eye to the optometrist? <laughs> what? Never mind, kid. We'll get your girl back. How? They could be anywhere in this graveyard! Don't worry. I spent a few years in the Congo tracking gorillas. Oh. Hey, the kids finish hacking and spreading buddy around back there. Oh, boss! Hi, hi, Steve! Head up, says! Intercepted! <laughs> the shit smell is strong as that way. Phase one is completed. Abe Akebale. <laughs> what 
is that? One of several gorillas they have planted with a parasitic alien intruder. I had this beast kidnap one of the Earth's teenagers in order to lure the others here in case they survive our confrontation with the revenants. You're going to let them find us? Of course. It's the only way. These are the same Earthlings that have been so close so often. <laughs> if any of them escape our walking corpses, they'll most likely run after the gorilla that took their friend. <laughs> they must be halted before they can inform the others about us. Have you contacted our ruler? Yes. By morning, we have synthesized enough glycerin to wipe out the entire town. <gasps> if Plan 10 is successful in Pinsnez, the ruler will launch our planet's fleet of flying saucers with their synthesized glycerin long distance electrode missiles to invade the Earth. <gasps> Excellent. <laughs> Edgar? Why is your long distance electrode gun put away? Why are you not controlling the undead in our battle with the zombies? I have tried, but I get no response. Is the glandular parallel attachment accessory registering? No, that ceased to register some time ago. Folks! Could it be possible the Earthlings defeated our zombies? More than possible, Notalian scum. <laughs> Try positively. Oh, yeah. Your weapon is a very Speak that moment. It's a gun. Been mighty useful to you before. It's flesh and blood. But you, you look like you got a lot of both. Kenneman, do we have to kill them? Time out. Yes! But it seems like such a waste. Well, wouldn't it be better now to kill a few of them than with their meddling permit them to destroy the entire universe? You're always right, Kahneman, but... Of course. But those are not my words. Those are the words of my ruler. I am getting such an incredible sense of deja vu right now. Anybody else? <laughs> that no. That's the first no. time I've been here. <laughs> no one feels like all of this has been done before? Are you nuts? <laughs> first time for me. It's almost like we're saying the exact same lines again. After one, same You might be confusing. Déjà vu for domaine public. It's easy to do. French can be very mystifying. That's right. I never know when to secretly pity, envy, or despise the French. <laughs> okay, I'm getting bored. We didn't come here to talk about the French. We came here to chew licorice and kick ass. We're all out of licorice. You're just embarrassing yourself, Lou. Hold it right there. Nice little oh. human. I, I don't want to hurt you, see? I come in peace. And you leave in peace,
My friends, you have seen this incident recreated from sworn eyewitness testimony and super secret Notalian notation notebooks. Can you prove that it didn't happen? Perhaps even now you are sitting next to someone from outer space. Look around. Did anyone respond to the Latinisms in the play? Is anyone sporting a Roman haircut? Even after viewing this play, some of us will still laugh at aliens from outer space, and even at the film They Live. But God help us in the future, the future that is affecting the future. And now, we recommend that anyone who suffers from general anxiety disorder, hallucinations, delusions, catatonia, or paranoia, and is not currently under a physician's care or taking medication, or is a frequent user of LSD, should leave the theater at once. Are we good? All right then, <laughs> live on stage from Hell's Playground, or perhaps even outer space, the clowns without pity, also known as the fucking clowns without fucking pity. 